eternally yours Whenever doubt appears How I am In time I learn I need you ever For I'm eternally Good afternoon, Mr. Barnes. Good afternoon. Is my fiance, uh, is the shower over yet? Will you come in, sir? No, 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 no. This, this is no place for me. I'm going to take the bishop to a ball game. Will you tell him I'll be waiting in my car? Yes, sir. One thing I hate about showers, they're so gold dinged harmless. <laughs> what do you want, a massacre? I had a good time at your party. Anita, you don't want to go to bed. Darling, don't tell me. Look, a couple of days after my shower, my husband had a bachelor party. <laughs> Was that something? Gloria, Gloria, you're in the house of a bishop. Well, there's something to it. After all, a bachelor dinner celebrates something. A man's looking back at his best day. And we can. Glory behave. Well, you're shocking the life out of Aunt Abby here. Well, do we clink glasses and howl with glee over Anita's wild oats? If any one of us dropped a wild oak, we'd keep darn mum about it. <laughs> Girls, you're listening to a happily married woman who doesn't mean a word she says. Oh, sure. I've got the same kind of a husband Anita's going to have. He's far too good for me. Too good for any one of us. That's it. He's just too good. Don't listen to her, darling. Listen to that, Dribble. Don't be silly. Hey, kids, gather around. I've got something here I would show to you. Sorry. This man is known as the great Arturo. You don't have to bear your souls to him. Just bring him to him, and he bears them for you. <laughs> He's an attractive. Have you ever been to one of them? No. Is that today? Oh, this afternoon. I wonder what they do. Joni, I'll tell you exactly what they do. They find out all about you beforehand. What your name is, what you do, what you think, and what you eat. And then they amaze you by telling you all about it. They're wonderful. Oh, I know just what he'll say. If he's clever, he'll tell you exciting things, daring things. My goodness. He'll take you by the hand and lead you into the future. He'll tell you you're going to marry a millionaire. Social register. Then you'll have two or three kids. How premature, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> two or three kids and life settles down like a pan of sourdough and wait for the undertaker. Oh. Take a position. And just in time, too. Oh, you're right. Right. How are you, darling? I'm nice. You know all the kids, don't you, guys? Oh, what am I supposed to do? A few well-chosen words, eh? She doesn't need any advice. <laughs> You've been getting some from Gloria. Oh, that kind, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Darling, are you hungry? Would you like something to eat? No, no, no. I've got to go away immediately. Gramps, perhaps you can tell us. What's the difference between a shower and a bachelor's dinner? We were discussing marriage in general. Yes. Uh, do you think airplanes will replace marriage? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. <laughs> I've only time to put my blessing on you. Some members of my diocese are not backing any too well this year. Not enough home runners to suit me. Have you any objections to my talking to him? What about... Watch his racket. And I have a reason for these special afternoons for ladies. Life, it appears to me, has laid a particularly heavy hand upon the majority of your sex. And you stumble blindly into a future laden with mystery. Now, if I can blow away those impenetrable clouds and show you for one moment the clear road, then the Monty Bank is king for a day. So step up, ladies, step up. <laughs> Now, uh, who is to be first? Oh, Mr. Arthur. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, what a very baffling hand. What two very baffling hands. Where have you been? Since you were eight years old. <laughs> well, I don't see anything very much to tell you, except that you ought to be congratulated. If 28 winters and summers have touched you so lightly. You have nothing very much to worry about for the future. Uh, would the lady in the blue hat, with all that abundance of uh, white equipment around it... Yes, the girl who's wondering whether I'm a complete fake or only party one. You, yes. Would you wait to the end of the performance, please? Your future troubles me very greatly. The air is full of messages and things for you.
Hey, shut that door. Hey, what's wrong? Do you want everyone in the house to know that I can't even find my collar bus? <laughs> <laughs> there, here you are, sir. Oh, Benson, you're a gem. Oh. My last man was with me four years, and he never learned to carry a spare. Is that why you fired him? No, I caught him peddling my illusions to other magicians. That's terrible. Terrible. Every one of his fingers should be broken, if you don't mind my saying so. A woman was the cause of it. If hadn't been for a woman, I'd still be playing the provinces. I didn't know you were married. Oh, I'm not any longer. This little blonde thing. Contortionist. I remember how she used to twist her leg around her neck. It was beautiful. Beautiful. She was only 19. 19? Yeah. That's where I made my mistake. Now, if you'll put Herman to sleep, we're all set. Wait. See, she was spring and I was autumn. No matter how hard I tried, I could not turn back the clock. No, Buzzard, you're still carrying a torch. Oh, no, sir. After our fighter set in, I can no longer make a living as a magician. She left me for an acrobat. I lost all respect for the lady. I wondered why a man of your talents was on the dole. Well, it was a lucky day for me when you come up to the magician's hall. Out of all those men, you picked me. Why did you do it? You were the cutest. Oh. gentlemen, thank you very much. And for my first illusion this evening, I intend to create a woman. But I warn you, she will not be made of sugar and spice and all things nice as the nursery rhyme goes. I prefer the rather more detached view of the scientist. Life begins with love, maestro, and don't swing it. Here, ladies and gentlemen, an ordinary retort. And here, all the ingredients which medical science tells us the human body is composed of. The trick, of course, gentlemen, is to make a good one. 65% oxygen. Watch me very carefully. 16% calcium. 10% hydrogen. 5% nitrogen. 3% chlorine. And 1% potassium. And further ingredients, ladies and gentlemen, are magnesium, sulfur, iron, sodium, and phosphorus. That's all there is to a woman, gentlemen. A poor, isn't it? to think that men have squandered their fortunes, thrown away their lives for a handful of chemicals worth less than four shillings at your local apothecaries or two shillings and sixpence at the cut rate. Oh, don't worry, ladies. Men are worth even less. His beauty makes a woman proud. Virtue makes them most admired. His modesty makes them seem divine. Oh, what a woman she'd be if I could stop now. But unfortunately, my recipe calls for just a little bit of conscience. So, temperament, vanity, jealousy. Without these, she would not be a woman. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the crowning essential, the most important ingredient of all, and she must have lots of it, love. Oh, beautiful. What a dish. Desirable lady, maestro, please. And still do not swing it. Adam, sell your clothes. I'm sure I put in modesty.
see, gentlemen, you never can get them quite perfect. I forgot to put in gratitude. We murdered them again. Yes, a very intelligent audience. All right, turn away. Well, you're timing that slap better every time. Oh, thanks, Pop. Come on, darling, let's go backstage and see her. She doesn't know her in town, does she? No, but what a big surprise. Well, Nita knows I'm Don's best friend. I'd rather not. Oh, all right, darling, I won't be long. All right, Marie, that'll be all. We were done. I am looking for the granddaughter of a bishop. Gloria, for heaven's sake, what are you doing here in London? Well, we're doing Europe in ten days. Oh, how wonderful to see you. Come on over here and sit down. I've got so much to talk with you about. Now, when are you leaving? How long? Oh, we're leaving on the boat train tonight, dear. Oh, and with a year and a half to go. Oh, that's awful, Gloria. I nearly died when I saw you in that costume. <laughs> Anita, how could you? Well, I'll tell you how could I. Tony had a redhead in the act named Lola. Lola de Vere. Now, you know, something had to be done about that. Mm, I see what you mean. Is he still head over heels, madly in love with you? <laughs> or are you just the chemicals he makes you Hey, will you shut up? For a year and a half, I've been on the merry-go-round, and now I want to relax for a minute. Okay, relax. Oh, Gloria, I want to remember the nice, peaceful life I used to live. <laughs> Here I am, the granddaughter of a bishop married to a galloping heathen. Anita, are you complaining? Gloria, if you hadn't stopped whirling for a year and a half, you'd be a little dizzy, too, wouldn't you? Well, Don is still waiting, sane and single. No, 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 no. I want to tame the man I've got. Gloria, I want a home like you have. And I want babies, too. Lots of babies. Well, the idea isn't copyrighted. So you want to live like me. Darling, you're not well. You see the world on its toes. I answer doorbells. First the front door. Do I want the lawn cut? Then the back door. Do I want any bluing? I can't keep a maid, but I do keep a budget. Oh, I keep a budget until I scream. Yeah. But you have your husband all to yourself. Oh, oh. Well, I thought there was something at the bottom of it. <laughs> Scaparelli, Worth, Chanel, and the woman complains. Complains? You know, Tony would call that making noises like a wife. What does the rascal do? Square himself with these things? Now, look here, Gloria. I will have you know that Tony is the most wonderful man that ever walked the face of this earth. No, no. They're not real. What? No, Grant's Pond's my real ones for me. I'm building a little home away up in Connecticut. And look, I've just gotten the plans for it. And there's some pictures, too, that just came. Isn't that a dream? <laughs> it is deep in the country, where there isn't a female for miles. Oh, what the heck, darling. Competition is the life of trade. It's cute. Does Tony know about it? Mm-mm. Not for anything in the world. Oh, Tony! Oh, sorry, darling. I didn't know you had anybody. Uh, this is Gloria, Tony. How do you How do? Are you? Oh, we met for a few minutes, didn't we, once? A few hours, but it's all right. Well, I just met Anita, so you must forgive my memory. Tony, Gloria was out front tonight. She was? Uh -huh. You must admit we're not exactly hiding Anita from the world. Yes, I'll have to admit it. Now, we don't think that marriage should smother people to death, do we, darling? No, darling, we do not. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'll get that. Hello? Oh, just a moment. I'll see if he's here. It's Betty Overton with the London Daily Tribune. I'll talk to her. You got my hands. Hello. <laughs> Hello, darling. How are you? Gloria, where are you going? Say, I really must go. Oh, Gloria, no, not so soon. Oh, please. Wait a minute. Hey, look, this may be a party. Would you like to join us? Oh, no, thanks. I'm on my way to the boat train. My husband's waiting. Send me the papers from Cairo and Timbuktu. Gloria, it's been so good seeing you again. I'll dream about you, too. Goodbye, darling. Bye. Say hello, Ralph, for me. Who is that? Just another rival. Never mind. My sweet. Where? The bag of nails? That will be wonderful. We'll be there. Goodbye, darling. 
Come on, Mom. Hop into your stuff. We're going to the bag of nails. Over wants to do another column on me. You go along, Tony. That one always makes me feel as if I'm intruding. Oh, beer sport. But she has 300 newspapers. I'll twirl around the floor twice, give her one drink and brush her off. Then you and I'll go places. No, some other time, darling, really. I'd be a nervous wreck if I tried to keep up with you every night. You sure you don't mind? Have I ever? No. Well. No, you're an angel. One day you'll sprout wings and fly away. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure of that. And listen, you mind your drinking. When you don't, you always say things you're sorry for the next day. I'll wear a muzzle. Uh-huh. You'll find the aspirin on the pillow, dear. Well, make it three, just in case my book says <laughs> three. It is. Thank you very much. <laughs> on its way. Look, my pet. How do you account for that? I um, fought for my honor, darling, and lost. Mm -hmm. You know, it seems to me you've been losing quite a few of these battles lately. You're making noises exactly like a wife. Why well, shouldn't I? After all, Tony, that's the fourth this month. I believe you're serious. Yes, I am serious. I... Well, gosh, Tony, the laundry can't even wash that stuff out. <laughs> oh. oh, you're wonderful. <laughs> oh, Tony. Tony, I swear I'm the only woman in the world who could ever live with you. You're the only woman in the world who's ever going to. Oh, darling. Oh. What's the matter? I must have been drinking firecrackers. Oh. Food. Ben, John! Benton! What did you talk about last night? <laughs> you as usual. <laughs> I bet Miss Elwood must have loved that. <laughs> <laughs> I think she must have done. She nearly bit my hair off while we were dancing. Well, for the looks of your collar, you pacified her all right. Well, what else could I do? She's got five million readers. Five million and two, my sweet. We'll read it this morning. <laughs> Brunch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you, Benton. Uh, now, let's see what kind of a break over it gave the old man. <laughs> Here we are. Magician will defy death in parachute jump. Oh, that's not it. Great Arturo to make daring leap from plane by Betty Elvin. Tony. <laughs> I'll leap, he said, from a plane 15,000 feet in the air, while my wrists are handcuffed behind my back. What else did I say? I challenge the police to produce handcuffs that will hold me. He will have less than two minutes to free himself from the handcuffs and release the parachute. Tony, did you say all those things? Must have done or she wouldn't have printed it. Your surprise reporter suggested next Saturday is the time and Croydon Aerodrome is the place. We shall see. Yes? Yes, he's here. It's the manager of the theater. Morning, Howard. Tony, old boy, Overton's interview's a sensation. Or you might have let me in on it a bit sooner. Yeah, well, don't do anything till I see you. But look here, old chap, I've already made arrangements with Croydon Aerodrome for Saturday morning. And Scotland Yards agreed to make it a test for some new handcuffs. Capital, isn't it? Capital, my foot. Why didn't you check with me first? Oh, you left word you were not to be disturbed before three o'clock. I'll be right over. Tony. He doesn't expect you to make that jump. He's uh, made a few arrangements, darling. Uh, Pops. Pops, promise me you won't go through with it. No, Mums, don't worry. If I don't talk myself out of this, I'm not the world's greatest escape artist. Promise? Promise. Benton. I'll take my coffee into my room. All right, darling. Oh, you made an awful chump of yourself last night, if you don't mind my saying. <laughs> Draw my bath. Lay out my lucky blue suit. I will jump 50,000 feet from a balloon. I will jump. Oh, oh. Do you know I actually had it announced over the BBC? Why the integrity of this theater's involved? I'll safeguard your theater with a good alibi. In the meantime, pray for rain. But I don't want the alibis. I want a parachute jump, rain or shine. All right. I'll be at Croydon on Saturday. And uh, please omit flowers. Speed of a human body weighing 175 pounds falling at 130 feet per second. One chance in a million. Then why did you inspect that airplane so carefully? Oh, I had to make it look legitimate, otherwise my career would be finished. It's about time we're going home. We've been here all night. It's after four o'clock in the morning. Mm. All right. Waitress. Yes, sir. Do you uh, use lipstick? Why, yes, sir. How much would you charge to kiss me? Kiss you, sir? What a very idea. Mm -hmm. Well, here's a pound. Would you um, smack me right there, please? I'd rather have my wife think I was round the night spots and suspect I'd been here. It's all right, Benton. I'll take that now. Oh, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Darling, you really cracked up with a good idea this time. If anything happened to you, I, I wouldn't want to live, Tony. And vicey this. <laughs> Come on, darling, get your arm around here. That'll be as hard as concrete by the time we get to the airport. We? Oui? You're not coming. I certainly am. No, certainly not. I've got to put on the act of my life today. Look, uh, take a look at that funny little face. You think you could deceive anybody? Well, darling, I don't want you to go out there without me. If I'm going to pull this thing off, I'm going to do it my own way. Perhaps I'm scared. I promised you, didn't I? Yes, but I... Well, I know you're vanity and I... But you know I hate even going up into planes. So why should I want to jump out of one? And I promised you. I say you're sorry. You're sorry? I can't say it. I'm sorry, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
darling. Please, Mr. Arturo. This document will release Croydon Airport and Scotland Yard from all responsibility. Oh, yeah. There we are. Thanks. Now, Benton, you keep these things for me till I get down, will you? I hope we're taking every precaution for your safety. Don't tell anybody I'm wearing my rubber heels. You're the most selfish <laughs> man I ever knew. <laughs> will give me a pain in the neck. Oh, thank you, Benton. Uh, has anybody got a parachute? Yes, sir. Uh... Driver, hurry up, will you? Well, I'll be praying for you all the way up. Skip the way up, and lift the way down that really matters. Oh, uh, wise guy, huh? <laughs> gentlemen, shall we get to work? Ladies and gentlemen, the great Arturo will be accompanied by two Scotland Yard officials to make sure that the head of us are not over before he leaves the Oh, 
My head swimming. Yeah, and it should be. You fainted. <laughs> Did the crowd see me? Oh, no. I pulled the curtains down. Must have been the sudden drop made me dizzy. No, dear. You got dizzy taking bows. I don't remember anything after I pulled the ring. Yeah, show me to the last. That's right, then. And the liar, too. Oh, darling, honestly, I didn't intend to do it. But when I got to the field and I saw all those thousands of people, I just didn't have the nerve to back out. Oh, well, anyway, you're here and you're all in one piece. That's something, isn't it? Oh, gosh, Tony, what you put me through today is... Oh, darling, you'll never have to go through that again. I've thought of a way of doing this jump that's just as safe as leaping off a doorstep. Hey, don't even joke about such a thing, will you? I'm not joking. Here, look. See? Just a case of muscular control. In a few weeks, that'll be a cinch. Get my hand supple enough and it'll slip right off. There. The difference between ten and five thousand a week. Is that how you did it today? No, I used this pick lock I hid in the seat of the plane last night. Why, if you ever tried that... I don't that try that anymore. That's much too risky. If I dropped that thing out of my fingers, it's been an awful time finding it. Besides, this thing, in a few weeks, it'll be child's play for the old master. And if the parachute doesn't open, then what? Darling, you know all parachutes are guaranteed to open. They don't they give you a new one? Now, you listen to me, Tony, and concentrate on what I'm saying. If you ever even mention this again, I'll leave you. Oh, darling. No, I mean it. I'm not kidding. You didn't make that jump alone today. I made it with you. Mums, I am sorry. I promise I'll never do anything again that you don't want me to do. $35,000 worth? $35,000? Darling, we can't afford that. That's so. Look, new contract, two years straight booking, and see where we're going. Sydney, Melbourne, Cape... Singapore, Bombay, Athens, Istanbul, Moscow, Leningrad, Vienna, and Budapest. That's what I call getting around. Uh, well, when does this tour start? Well, we close here tonight, catch the boat on Monday, open in Australia on the 14th. That gives us exactly 30 days and nothing to do but eat and sleep and sleep and eat and get very well acquainted. But we can have our vacation at home first, like you promised. Oh, home is no place for vacation. Oh, but Tony, you... Well, darling, you need a rest. You've been working too hard, and... For too long years, well, you don't... you don't want to lose a contract like this, do you? Oh, I'd so hope that... But besides, I thought you were looking forward to meeting Grams and Dan Abby and all my friends. Well, I was, but gosh, to lose a tour like this just to eat a couple of home-cooked meals makes about as much sense as taking a bath with your socks on, doesn't it? Uh, 
Pop. I didn't tell you because I was so sure that we were going home at last, but I... Well, I had Gramps get us a house. Uh, wait a minute. I... A real surprise for you. Isn't it beautiful? Well, darling, isn't it? Looks like a farmhouse. Yes, it is. Away up in Connecticut. Miles from anyone. Who'd you rent it from, a hermit? Well, as a matter of fact, I, I didn't exactly rent it. Just Fine, now. then we're not stuck. Can we do something about this tour for a month or two anyway? I need it, Tony. And it'd do you so much good, too. But, well, darling, it, it would change our whole viewpoint. Tony, what's wrong with our viewpoint? We've got everything. We haven't got a home. Aren't we lucky? How do you know we're lucky? We've never tried it. And we never will. Can you imagine us chained to four walls? No, not now. More ever. Hey, who started this home chat stuff anyway? That sort of talks for married people that need a house of the fence around to keep them together. We've got a much bigger bond than that between us, haven't we, Pony? I hope so. Well, you kill me. There you stand, dripping the chinchilla and wishing it was a bungalow apron. <laughs> Telephone. Hello. Olga. How are you, beautiful thing? Oh, don't worry about that. You're not the first American songbird they've panned down here. I'll be right down, darling. Meet you in the bar. All right. Olga wants me to go down and cheer her up. Yes, she wants it, too. All the critics down here have been giving her high notes and awful beating. <laughs> Poor Olga. She and her old man always battling. Why can't everybody be happy like we are? I don't know, Tony. Just got no idea of give and take, I guess. Well, I'll meet you downstairs. Be quick, darling, will you? Oh, hey, don't forget to sit on my right so the picture in the paper will read from left to right. Anita, the great art hero, and Olga Ponis. Get it? Yes, I get it. And, and wear the chin It'll make that mink of Olga's look like unborn bath mat.
Hello? Give me the Pan American Clipper office, quick. When's the next plane out? Sold out? Operator, give me the port of the Hotel Cristobal. Anything wrong, sir? Read that. This is the great Arturo. When's the next steamship going to New York? Not till Thursday? Nothing before that? Or tonight? Pack my things. Hmm? What is it? Oh, mixed freighter? All right, I'll take it. Yes, for two. You're not going to cast the entire tour, are you? Madam can easily be replaced. This is like as if we lost Herman or some of them trained mice. Get out! Pack my things! Wait, Arturo. Oh, I will cancel my tour. Two years. Hack my tour. Hack my tour. Hack my tour. Quick. has 30 days in which to file an answer. The legal requirements will be fulfilled if we mail the complaint to him at Black Deep in Arrow. But the 30 days may be up before the letter reaches him. You see, he's on tour, Mr. Jones. As long as we're not asking alimony. Well, oh, I know. Morrissey, that's his manager in New York. He'd know where to find him. Yes, you bet. Anita, darling, you are tired. Why don't you go back to the hotel and rest, dear? Let me take care of all these little bothersome details. All right, bless your bets, folks. Well, all right, Abby. I think I will, if you don't mind. I am kind of tired. Shall I go with you, darling? No, 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 don't bother. Good night, Mr. Jones. Good Thank night, you very child. much. And it's number 28, Black. Well, you got rid of her very nicely, didn't you? What's your proposition? They don't say that. Ah, now, come on. Break away, boy. Break away. Break away. Now, stop telegraphing your punches, Larry. Keep your left up, Eddie. Your jaw's wide open. Now, what did I tell you? Ah, uh, stop that. That's enough. That's enough. Now, uh, hit the shards, boys. All of you. Get ready for choir practice. How do you do? How do you do, sir? I was given to understand I might find Bishop Peabody here. Quite right. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm not bishoping at the moment. Oh, I see. Well, where's my wife? I don't think we've met before. I'm sorry, my name's Arturo. Known as the Great. Hmm? But where is my wife? I can't tell you. I'm heading for the Shah. Look, if you don't let me see her, you're going to ruin the rest of her life. Oh. <laughs> the rest of my life, too, I suppose. That doesn't bother you very much. No. Ruining people's lives doesn't bother me a bit. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sir, if she wants to compromise our way of living... I'm sorry. I'm not in her confidence. Is my shot. Well, thank you very much. For what? For nothing. Absolutely nothing. No use, Morrissey. I will not leave New York. Okay, then it's honky tonks and shooting gallery. Okay, then it's honky tonks and shooting gallery. What do you mean, honky tonks and shooting galleries? I won't play them dumps. Honky tonks and shooting galleries. That we played the palace and the palladium and all those places. Don't I? Oh, hello. Is there any news for me? Yes. She divorced you. Divorced me? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, where did she go? Some cruise on another. San Francisco. Hey, you. Come on. Get on there. We're waiting. Come on. Snap into it. She's divorced you. She's divorced you. She's divorced you. She's divorced you. Ladies 
and gentlemen. I have here an ordinary pack of cards. Tony, I swear I'm the only woman in the world who could ever live with you. Tony, I swear I'm the only woman in the world who could ever live with you. Ordinary pack of cards. You're the only woman in the world who's ever going to. He divorced you. Tony, I swear I'm the only woman in the world who could ever live with you. And you're the only woman in the world who's ever going to. I wonder what's the matter with the guy. I think he's stiff. <laughs> he is drunk. Why don't you get a bushel? Take off those boxes. Don't you touch you? Get off, get off. Take him out. Give him a sleigh ride. Oh, good morning, Don. Good morning, Captain. Ladies. Oh, dear, Don. Good morning, Don. Oh, would you like to stretch your legs, Anita? No, Don, thanks. I'm quite comfortable here. Thank you, buddy. Nice to see you. Thank you. Shall we? Yeah, yeah. How did you get Don on this boat? Just what did you cable him? Oh, don't criticize me. You should be grateful to be free and in a world where men yes, are... Yes, darling, I know where men are men. But I'm not free, Abby. Oh, I know my marriage was sheer lunacy, but a few words in court doesn't change. Oh, but, darling, you're not crazy and you're not weak. No? Listen, Abby. If Tony walked down that deck this second, I'd throw myself into his arms and stay there and hate myself as long as I lived. Oh, darling, you really frighten me. I frighten you. I scare me to death. Abby, can a captain of a boat marry people? What? Darling! Uh, take it easy. Don't break your neck. Oh. I'll ask them the next time they come around. Oh, but I... I've always wanted to perform a wedding at sea. This is my first one. Oh, mine too. Come in. And your last, isn't it, darling? <laughs> Congratulations. My car will meet you and bride at pier and take you to Rayon Room for annual benefit. Expect both tomorrow at the house party at my Adirondack Lodge for honeymoon. Bingham. Oh, he always has a crowd up there. Well, Don, just send him a radiogram and tell him that we've made other plans, that's well, all. I, I can't do that. He's my boss. Oh. Oh, I, I understand. Well, this, that means we'll have to dress right on the ship and then go to the party right from the dock. It's H.B. Bingham. He's my boss. He's given us a party. I, uh, I, I hope you don't mind, oh, Anita. No, Don, of course I don't mind. Don't be silly. Thank you very much. Why, as, as Gloria would say, it's so sane and so normal and so, so wholesome. Of course she doesn't mind. Can't you see that dear child is just so happy she's hysterical? Yeah, yeah. Well, here's to the happy couple. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this evening we have a very great surprise for you. We have finally persuaded the most distinguished artist to emerge from a year's retirement. None other than the great Arturo. Oh, they haven't forgotten me. Oh, very intelligent audience. That's right. Is the microphone all right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, can you go over the top? Over the top. Want to try this set? Sounds all right to me. Yes. And at the same time, to pass among you a few little white cards upon which you may write the questions that you want the great Arturo to answer. Miss Lola. Oh, would you like to ask a question, sir? Anything I like. As long as you read it back first, sir. My 1937 income tax is being investigated. How will I come out? Signed, anxious. Please retain the question, sir. Seal it in the envelope. Oh, Carrie. I'm going to write a question. Young yeah, lady, yes, may I have a card, please? Surely. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm entertaining some business associates at my lodge in the Adirondacks. Oh, Carrie, how do you spell Adirondack? Well, uh, Don't I... tell me. This weekend, will the weather be good for winter sports? Please retain yes, the question. Yes, I know. I retain the question. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's all we'll have time for. Oh, let me put it in you as nervous as a cat. Well, over the top. Yeah, up and out. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And now, uh, my first question is from a gentleman who signs himself anxious. Will you stand, please? There you are, so would you press the envelope to your forehead? You have asked me a question to do with taxes, income tax. Uh, you have asked, my 1937 income tax is being investigated, how will I come out, correct? You come out very well, sir, very well indeed. I see no criminal intention, so very probably you will not go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> my next question is from a young lady who signs herself distressed. Will she stand? Madam, questions like yours, I prefer to answer at the table. <laughs> Mr. Bingham's table, please, sir. sir. Well, our best wishes to you, my dear. Thank you. Congratulations, Don. Thank you, Mr. Bingham. So, this is Anita. Well, sit down, my dear, and tell us all about Thank your you. lovely cruise. My next question is signed H.B. Will the writer stand, please? Uh, that's you. Yeah. Tom, get me out of here. Why? Tom, please, you'll see me. What if he does? Uh, there are many things I can tell you, sir. I'll come to your table at the end of the performance, if I may. Oh, by all means, yeah. He's coming to our table. Benton Lowe. Great news. I've been sitting out front with Harry Middleton. I have a terrific offer for Tony to appear at the World's Fair. Oh, it's marvelous. Oh, well, I'd be glad to be working again. His plain leap great. will be a sensation. But Mr. Morrissey, he's in no condition to make a plain leap. He'll have two months to get in condition. Think he can do it, Benton? Huh? Oh, well, yeah, now that he's got his wife out of his mind, it... he might, he might. Yeah, he might. Uh, Mrs. Bingham, Mr. Arturo, Bingham? Uh, Mrs. Barnes, Mr. Barnes. Barnes. Barnes? A waiter? Oh, a chair. Yeah. Oh, I have one right here, don't worry. Oh, thanks. I believe I've met Mrs. Barnes before. Uh, didn't you attend one of my special matinees for women once? Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I seldom forget the taste. Mrs. Bingham, you should have asked a question tonight. And you've got to attend one of my matinees. They've altered the lives of quite a number of people, haven't they, Mrs. Barnes? Well, temporarily, perhaps. <laughs> Well, now we'll find out how good you really are. <laughs> oh, tonight I'm in a particularly receptive mood. Tonight I see all and I know all. All right, then. Tell us, tell us what I've written on this card. Uh, you've written, um, I'm entertaining some business associates at my lodge in the Adirondacks this weekend. How will the weather be for winter sports, right? Well, that's, that's remarkable, isn't it, Carrie? <laughs> well, nothing does escape you, does it? <laughs> no, not for very long. Oh, it's wonderful, Harley. Isn't it incredible, Donald? Yeah, yeah. I can tell you much more amazing things than that. Well, that'd be amusing. <laughs> yes, would be. Well, how about it, Mr. Arturo? I've, uh, I promised the newlyweds good weather, and I have other guests coming besides. Excuse me. Mr. Barnes, I just noticed your hand. It's very interesting. Would you, would you clench it as you did a moment ago? Yeah, that's right. I thought you were mad at something. Mm -hmm. Is that as hard as you can clench it? I don't see anything there to worry about very much. This is silly. Barnes, please, after all, Mr. Arturo is just trying to entertain us. Yes, you're a man of very fine habits, Mr. Barnes. Well, he certainly is. A Donald to a tea. Oh, thank you. The sort of man who likes to settle down in one place with a home and children. That's right. And right here is thrift. You'll never spend more money on jewelry and furs than you earn, Mr. Barnes. 
time. Well, I should say not. And, and look at this bump of constancy, Mrs. Barnes. You never have to worry about him coming home with lipstick on his collar. Did you hear that, darling? Yes, dear, yes. Oh. Do you mind if I speak plainly? Well, certainly not. It's his part. Yes, but it remotely concerns you because I see no chance of this hand ever rocking the cradle. May I just check that? It's one of those things, I guess. What things? The hands don't match. How odd. Children and Anita's hands and not... Oh, I... Mr. Bingham, would you mind, Tara? It's been a very tough voyage, and I really think we ought to be leaving. Come along, darling. Please, please, my dear. Nonsense, I'm... my dear. Why, an evening like this doesn't happen once in a lifetime. Please stay just a little while. No, I... Yes, darling, please. Sit down. Masterfully done, Mr. Barnes. No wife could resist that. Well, I'm so glad you all stopped Mrs. Barnes from running away. Now, I can read your mind. It's quite evident to me you don't believe it. No, I certainly don't. But you're thinking of something definite now. Yes, I certainly Of Rio. Rio Janeiro. Yes. I see a deed. I see clothes, trunks of clothes, jewelry, furs, an airplane, somebody running away, a letter. Am yes. I right? A letter to a man who loved a woman madly. Blindly. No, you're wrong. That letter was written to a man who loved only himself. Then why didn't she tell that man she was planning divorce and marriage to somebody else when she wrote that? Because that isn't true. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Forgive me. I guess I'm just in no mood for this sort of thing. We must go. And besides, my grandfather's waiting for us. Well, I, I suppose we will have to let you go, but we will see you in the mountains. Yes, eh? in the mountains. <laughs> the last couple of hours have been kind of hectic. Mm -hmm. You like the vicious blessing, of course. Good yes, night. Yes, of course. Uh, good night, Mr. Good, good night. Good night. Good night, H.B. Good night. 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 Well, you, uh, you must have hit rather close, eh? Oh, <laughs> I never can tell, Mr. Bingham. Now, about your weather. I see unseasonable rains, no winter sports. You'd be very well advised to have some indoor entertainment for your guests. Dear Mrs. Bingham, oh. well, next time you must ask a question. Oh. You see, you're what I call a sensitive. And people like you with that clarity of soul make my job so easy and so pleasant. Oh. Well, I'm... You do this every night. Get the kinks out of you mentally and physically. 25 times a night. Oh, darling, don't let that smart Alex spoil your evening. He isn't going to spoil mine. Don, oh, uh, 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 Just a second, darling. The, the, the blinds are up. Now, uh, what were you going to say? I, uh, I, I have to talk to Graham, Don. You, you don't mind, do you? Talk to him in the morning. Uh, no, no, I couldn't possibly. It's, it's awfully important. Uh, don't wait up for me, will you? Silly. Uh, I'll see you in the morning, huh? Good night. Hey, wait a minute. You're not going to talk to the bishop all night, are you? Don, I, I have an awful lot to say. Look, have, I... Have, have I done or said something wrong? Oh, no, no, of course not. You, you, you've been awfully sweet, but I... Good night, Don. Good night? Yes, good night. It's ridiculous. are so elusive. Gramps, I'd rather die than have Tony know I made a mess of things again. Well, one thing's certain. You can't evade your husband forever. No, perhaps not, but I can tonight, and I'm not going to leave this room. Well, you better take my bed, and I'll go and bunk with Doc. Oh, no, you don't. You two will get to talking, and then where will I be? I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll stay right here. I'll take this comfort, and I'll be very comfortable on that chair. All right. Have it your own way. I'll tuck you up. All right. Not all right. Fine. Good night, child. Good night, Grant. And remember, no crying. No crying. Gosh, how I'd like to get even with him. It'll be just my luck to never see him again. 
Due to one, you're wrong, and the money goes to the milk fund. It's the best. Oh, Harley, here he comes. It's Mr. Arturo. Mrs. Bingham, Mr. Veer, and of course, Hello, my dear, you, you remember Mr. Arturo. Dear Mrs. Bingham. Oh. Uh, Mr. Veer, Mr. Arturo, this is Mr. and Mrs. Campbell. You do? Glad to know you. What's he doing here? I don't know, but H.B., I know, H.B., I'm not going to have you humiliated again. We're going to get out of here. Hold on, no. Why, we can't give him a satisfaction running us out of here. <laughs> and Mrs. Barnes, Mr. Veer. Hello, dear. How sweet to see you again. And Tony. Yes. My, well, this is quite a surprise. Yes. Uh, uh, Lola, this is my husband, Mr. Barnes, Mr. Veer. Hello. How do you do? Hello. Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> you, uh, you certainly missed your weather forecast. Oh, even the great Arturo makes mistakes sometimes. <laughs> yeah, he's made one now. Oh, it's so nice to see you looking so chic. Why, from what Tony said, I expect you to be quite matronly. Oh, oh dear Tony. <laughs> I how well my old chinchilla looks on you. I thought the Moors had it by now. You two girls should have a lot of fun talking over the good old days. Yes, <laughs> what was so good about them. Oh, <laughs> so oh, 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 thank you. Uh, Mrs. Bingham? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Campbell? Yeah. Thank you. Well, First today. Me too. First today. Hmm? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me, too. Now, you see it? No, you don't. Now, you see it? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> a little arthritis, you see. Uh, pardon me, sir. May I have the card? Why, sir, they always like to help out an amateur. <laughs> what do you mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Your card, sir? Oh, thank you. Some more? Some more? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. There you are. Well, that's the show off, right? Eh? <laughs> now, pardon me, sir. A little egg on your vest? There? Oh, an egg. Oh, I see the old egg tree here. Yep, he has that. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Here's oh, the egg. The old egg tree. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pardon me, I have to go upstairs. <laughs> oh, is, uh, is Mr. Veer quite all right? Oh, she's fine, so thank you. Just a little sleepy, but... Uh, I don't know how I'm going to be able to entertain you people now. Oh, oh, oh well, my. Everyone's shame. expecting it. Yes. Well, maybe Mrs. Barnes would volunteer. We worked together before. Oh, how about it, Mrs. Oh, Barnes? Yes, please do. No, no, I, I couldn't possibly get me out of this. I can't. Well, I don't know. Well, Barnes, surely you can persuade your wife. Oh, no, Mr. Bingham, really, I, I couldn't be persuaded. Get me out of this, will you? I'm sure that all Mrs. Barnes needs is a little coaxing. I just want her for a hypnotic subject. Come on, darling. It's a fake. Nothing can happen. No, it isn't a fake, darling. Everything else is yes, but not that. He really hypnotizes people. Do something, will you? Go on. I can't offend the boys. Go on. Oh, all right. But you'll be sorry. If he does anything to humiliate you, he'll be sorry. Go on. Oh, oh that's excellent. That's fine. Oh, it's yes. so sweet of you to volunteer, Mrs. Barnes. Yeah. Now, if you'd all sit down and keep very, very quiet, please. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it'd be nice if you could find a little place, too. Could you? Remember how I used to cure your headaches like this? You're giving me one now. Forgive me.
Mrs. Barnes is now completely in my power. Anything I ask of her, she will do. My least command, my slightest desire. Isn't that marvelous, Carrie? Carrie! Oh, <laughs> I was just looking. <laughs> I shall now attempt an experiment in post-hypnotism. The commands I give now will not be obeyed until after my subject has been released from her trance. The interesting point of this experiment is that no commands will be obeyed unless the subject is completely willing. For instance, at this moment, I could order Mrs. Barnes to uh, shoot her husband. <laughs> and she'd do so at once. But with post-hypnotism, she would refuse. Unless, of course, she were willing to do so under normal circumstances. Barnes, where's your sense of humor? I will now pass among you and you will tell me things that you wish Mrs. Barnes to do. You ask it. You will hum a few bars of Yankee Doodle. Uh, take a cigarette from this box and give it to Mrs. Trubshaw. Take a rose out of this... Uh, vase, vase, or vase, and give it to Mrs. Bingham. Is there anything you'd like your wife to do for you, Mr. Barnes? No, you better not. Mm-hmm. When you've done those things, come back here and kiss me. Dee-da-da-da-da-da-da, <laughs> Darling, you were... What? Don't be a schoolboy. Look, Mr. Bingham, I'm hurting me. Anita, what's the idea? I couldn't help it. Don, he made me do it. He said he couldn't make you do anything unless you were willing. Certainly, you don't think I wanted to kiss him, do you? But you did kiss him, didn't you? Well, yes, but... It was just habit. Habit? Yes, we, we, we always did it at the finish of every act. Well, I mean, after every performance. Oh, Don, you know what I mean. Oh, Anita, let's you and I go to bed. Uh, uh, I'll ask Mrs. Bingham about our room. The handkerchief, the cigarette, you know. Mrs. Bingham, Anita's very ill, and we'd like to be excused if... Oh, Donald, I meant to tell you. We have a problem. Oh, Anita, I intended to tell you at dinner. We have only six bedrooms. Uh, that's right, isn't it, Harley? I think so, Carrie. We've only had the lodge 30 years. <laughs> well, anyway, there are 12 of us, and Mr. Arturo and his charming companion are not married. So naturally, well, that's the way it is. May I make a uh, suggestion? Mrs. Bingham, I have a suggestion. Uh, perhaps we girls could double up and, and the gentlemen could do the same. Huh? That's right. Lola can share a room with Mrs. Barnes, and I can share Mr. Barnes' room, and none of you married people will be inconvenienced at all. Yes. Well, does, uh, does that arrangement uh, please everyone? Yes. No. Quiet, Barnes. Well, that's that. Now, there's bridge, billiards, anything you want. Just make yourselves at home. Now, I'm going to do a trick. I shall place the body in a horizontal position by going to bed. <laughs> oh, Mr. Arturo, may I speak to you for a moment? Yes, please. Pardon me. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Terrific man, that H.B. <laughs> That, that wasn't bad, eh? <laughs> you know, I, seriously, I, I wouldn't ride Barnes too much if I were you. You know, I once saw him run 75 yards through a Notre Dame line for a touchdown. Oh, well, thank you very much, sir, but I'm not afraid. If he gets tough, I'm sure I can outrun him. I'm sure you will. <laughs> well, good night. Good night. So, I old bed. Kiss, baby, good night. Oh, what's the matter with here? Get lipstick on the collar, darling. Well, good night. Yeah. Good night, all. Good night. This was your idea, you know. 
What else could I suggest, Don? Did you have to suggest anything? Oh, please, let's not argue. All right. Atta boy, make her like it. I, I, I do like it. There. I'm going to be awful lonesome tonight, darling. Well, you'll be with Tony. I'll still be lonesome. Good night. Uh, Don, Don, pro promise me that you won't, you won't make any trouble, huh? I... Oh, please, Don, please don't. All right. Oh, Don, did you hurt yourself? No! Still trying to convert that 75-yard touchdown? Don't trip over the... That's better. Do you like these question and answer games, Mr. Barnes? I know the answers. Two and two. Four. That's splendid. Perhaps you can come in while your wife kissed me tonight. I'll tell you more than that when we get out of Mr. Bingham's house. Well, why not now? You'll probably feel better, and I know I would. I promised Anita I wouldn't hurt you. Then you can promise me something. I want you to promise that I can see Anita alone tomorrow. I realize I'm asking you a lot, but there's something I want to find out. I wouldn't try it if I were you. All right, well, whatever happens, don't say I didn't warn you. Nothing's going to happen. I've taken an awful lot from you, but this is too much. I'm getting out of here, and I'm taking Anita with me. Give me the key. Give me the key. What you need is a drink. Oh, you don't drink, do you? Cigarette? Oh, you don't smoke. You're not allowed to fight. It must be awful. Give me that key before I choke it out of you. Look, why don't you crawl back in the woodwork where you came from? Ah, I'll have to turn you into a rabbit. I've tried to keep my promise to Anita. I admit you're making an awful fool out of me, but you listen to me, Mr. Arturo the Great. Life is making an awful fool out of you. Someday you're going to learn about fine things, clean things, decent things, things you can't pull out of the air with your tricky fingers. That's why you lost Anita. No woman likes a fake, and everything about you is fake. Anita came to me willingly once, and I think she'll come to me willingly again. Oh, you think she still loves you? She kissed me tonight, and I think I'm entitled to find out just what that kiss means. All you're entitled to is a beating. Trickery is still good, my friend. Oh! Shh! Don't make so much noise. Anita might not like it. Oh! Will we come to terms, Barnes, or not? Let me go. She might wake up your boss. What about it? All right, have it your way. You give me your word? Why not? She'll hurt you much more than you're hurting me. Oh. Matter hurt your back? Yeah. A doctor for you? No. Unless I can rub it with liniment. No, just leave me alone. Oh, I hate to put you to bed with all your clothes on, but I don't think we ought to move you about much till somebody's seen it. It'll be all right in a couple of weeks. And believe me, I'm really sorry about this. Don't worry about Anita. I'll tell her you slipped on the rug. And... Oh. oh, somebody must have hit me. If you want anything in the night, don't hesitate to wake me up. Good night, old man. Oh. Oh. Tony. Tony, I'd like to speak to you alone for a minute, please. Oh, you took the words right out of my mouth. Where would you like to go? Anywhere away from this crowd. It would be less conspicuous out on the lake. All right. Tell you? She did all night long. 
She seems to have been pretty happy up there. Oh, well, she was only up there once. Well, it really doesn't make any difference. I don't know why I mentioned it. Now, but listen I... to me. All this is so easy to explain. No, Tony, you listen to me. You've had your little say. Now, let me have mine. I divorced you to give you your freedom, and for no other reason, believe me. You found happiness with Lola. Now, for heaven's sake, leave me alone, Tony. Stop persecuting me. Let me have my chance. I'm not persecuting you. I know it seems like that to you. But in my own clumsy way, I've been fighting for happiness. Lola doesn't mean anything to me. Oh, Tony. I brought her up here to try and find out if you still cared. Oh, really? Oh, well, you think I'm lying? Well, certainly. What do you expect me to think? Well, this is no place to try and prove anything. What are you doing? Let's not stop here, Tony. We've They're going to settle this thing once and for all. There's nothing to settle. Oh, Believe yes, there me. is. No, there isn't. And if Don here... Don knows all about this. I made a deal with him last night. I told him I thought you still loved him. You told him what? I told him I thought you still loved me and he didn't think you did. Well, do you? Oh, look, Tony, there's no sense in pretending about this thing. Yes, yes, I did love you very much. I loved you more than any woman could ever Then why did you run anyone. away? Because I couldn't stand it any longer. I knew you wouldn't change. I did change. The moment you left me, I knew I'd never be able to live with anybody else. Stop it, Tony, please. needs me. And I don't. No, you don't. You don't need anyone. Why, well, you even live in a world all of your own. No one's really a part of it. And I wasn't. But there must be something I can do. Nothing, Tony. No matter what? No matter what. Tony, let's get out of here. kept on for a month or more. No exercise of any kind. Very well, Doctor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Doctor. Anita, come here. <laughs> I wasn't so bad after all, was it? No. You love me? Well, after all, Don, you're my husband. I'm sorry I slipped on that rug and spoiled your honeymoon.
Why don't you go? Well, it's still two seconds too long. Two seconds. Do you realize what that means? The difference between here and hereafter. Uh, suicide. We just have to hide the pig lock in the plane and hope they don't find it. Come on, let's try it again. Child, there's only one thing to do. Break clean. Tell your husband the truth. I can't, Gramps. Anita, the doctor just untaped me. Look. I'm strong as a bull again. Excuse me, sir. Darling, I know you've been very patient and... Well, I'd, oh. I'd like to spend my first day out looking for an apartment, if you don't mind. All right, Dad. The great Art Juro sends me a pass for his opening at the fair this afternoon. Like to take it in, child? No, thanks. That's fine. And you two youngsters run along and meet me at the airport in the fair. I'll be waiting for you, child. All right, Gramps. Come on, Don. Anita. Come on. A telegram is from my lawyer. I had him look into that affair at Reno. The divorce is not worth the paper it's written on. If Tony wants to do anything about it, Anita's still married to him. But you wouldn't dare tell anyone. It's bigamy for Anita. And perjury for you. Oh. It's a pity you're too old to spank Abby. Or are you? See our new apartment. It's just what we wanted. Have you signed the lease? Not yet. Why? Leases are so binding in this world of impermanency. Eh? <laughs> Nothing on him. Not even a pick lock or anything. Turn around. All right, Mike. Put the handcuffs on him. Well, happy landing. Thanks. You'll make it all right. Don't worry. It's a beautiful plane, but it's not the one I left the pick lock in. Not the same plane. You can't do that. You can't go. No, no. That's like committing suicide. Shut I know it. Shut up. Call the policeman. Officer, come here. Just a moment. That's not the plane. You can't let him go to that plane. That's not the plane. Shut that up, you. I'm telling you. Don't let him go. It's like committing suicide. Who is this man? I don't know. I've never seen him before in my life. What? Take him away. He's a communist. Oh, no, no, don't let him go. I'm telling you. Don't let him go up that plane. I tell you, it's like committing suicide. Don't let him go up. Come on, boys, let's go. Gentlemen. I don't think he's going to make it anymore. 
कर चुका Darling, look. No. 